So we're here at Embedded World in Hall 1. And uh, let's go visit the latest with the Technexion. Hi, Nicholas. Hi. Hi. You made it to Embedded World? Yeah. This yeah. is a cool show. Yes, it is. Every year we see you. It's an amazing show. It's the best show for Embedded. It is the, the show to be in, uh, in Germany. Um, we hope many of your viewers will visit us uh, next year. And you are a very important embedded company, right? Yes, we are the first boot here, so you cannot miss us, right? Yeah, cl closer uh, so. than uh, Renaissance or Microchip or all these other... Okay, anyway, um, you visit us many times. Let me show you a little bit uh, new things that we have. So what, is, uh, uh, what, is, what are you holding right here? I'm uh, holding here the IMX8 uh, M Mini. Uh, NXP launched that uh, yesterday, today is the second day. Uh, we have that here on display, completely done. I'll show you the back side. Oh, oh. it's uh, shock proof. Yes, it is uh, shock proof. Uh, so, all done, completely uh, working. I have a working demo here that I can show you. Uh, so, it's. What, what's with the Mini? The Mini? Uh, the Mini is the follow up from the IMAX 8M. Uh, so it has a reduced uh, feature set, a lower power, cooler computing. Um, so really a good uh, candidate for embedded uh, projects that require display, uh, camera, and uh, IoT connectivity. And the, co the processor is similar as the last one? Yes, it's a 64-bit uh, ARM Cortex-A uh, processor. Uh, 53? 53, yes, correct. Quad-core, Quad yes, correct. All right. So, we have this in a couple of uh, different form factors. So please follow me. So you're launch partner. Yes, we are launch partner. We, uh, we are in the press release from NXP as well. Uh, so I have the IMAX 8M uh, Mini here yeah. in a uh, uh, form factor with an FPGA as well. Which uh, FPGA you have uh, here? We use the latest part for that. A latest, uh, one of the good FPGA companies? Uh, yes, one of them. So, um, we have as well Wi-Fi on there and Bluetooth and a an, uh, ROM uh, power management IC uh, as well. So what does the FPGA do on this one? The FPGA, we can uh, generate additional signals that the customer needs. So if the customer needs additional serial ports or uh, CAM bus or other industrial I.O., we can generate them uh, for the customer in the FPGA on a project-by-project -project basis. And so, so <clears throat> I see a lot of uh, IMAX 8M going on here, 8M Mini. Yeah, so, so um, we have uh, the Pico series of our modules, yeah. which is uh, a little bit uh, smaller in, in uh, form, uh, the same form chip. factor. Yes, it's also a Mini. Here you can see the uh, 8M Mini. So, uh, the good thing about the Pico module is that we have them already for many, many generations. But without so, the FPGA in this one, right? No, there's no FPGA in there. Yeah. But we started with the IMX6 UL, ULL, IMX6, Solar Duo Quad, um, the IMX7, as well as the IMX 8M and the 8M Mini. Everything is pin-to-pin uh, -pin, uh, uh, compatible with each other which uh, give uh, customers a uh, very wide range of scalability from low-cost um, uh, solutions to uh, very high-end demanding uh, multimedia solutions. So does this one, the, the 8M, require a heatsink or...? Uh, the 8M uh, requires a heatsink, uh, correct. It's an, uh, a very powerful part. It uh, supports 4K resolution, uh, HDR, uh, so it's a very power-hungry uh, unit. Um, and if you put the, the 8M next to it, the Mini, I mean... Yes, the Mini is here. Yeah. yeah. And then... Um, so the same form factor, the same form factor, the same tree connector, same placement, everything the same, the same Wi-Fi, antenna on the same place, mounting hole, same place, everything the same, is a drop-in replacement for customers that want to go into lower power um, uh, mode or people that want to have higher um, <coughs> higher performance. Does, so, uh, does the Mini um, uh, have less performance a little bit, right? A little bit less, yeah, but it is optimized for embedded uh, applications. It might also be in a, s a smaller nanometer. 
Um, Compared I to believe this. so, yeah, but I think it's, it's both. I'll try to ask yeah, NHB about the, all the it, details about this yes. one. And um, so this is the one you showed before? Yes, uh, this is the Axon. The Axon is with the FPTA. Uh, I just explained that already. Um, again, board-to-board -board connectors. Um, a lot of our customers, they like board-to-board -board connectors so they can use the fastening screws and it is a real ruggedized uh, solution. Um, we, however, have uh, also a lot of customers that like to have something with an, uh, an SO DIM uh, connector. So we have that as well. So, um, so we have this. Um, where is this different? Is um, um, with the board-to-board -board connector. Um, we have three connectors that are already there for many uh, generations. Uh, there are a lot of new uh, IOs introduced um, um, by by the technology of today. So, like USB 3.0 have additional pin requirements. Uh, etc. etc. So there's a need for having some flexibility there to bring the latest um, I/O to the external world. So we we designed this one. Um, so now we have four generations, uh, four versions. And EDM. EDM. We, uh, you remember the first time you came to Computex, uh, 2012. Um, we launched EDM. Um, so EDM is a very good um, uh, form factor for industrial uh, applications. What does it stand for EDM? Uh, em um, embedded design modules. Right. So um, this is for industrial projects, uh, bigger, si bigger systems. The module is a little bit bigger, as you can see. So it's a little bit bigger uh, product, but again, we have many generations, and they are. Uh, hardware pin compatible with each other, so giving the customer a lot of uh, um, flexibility and scalability in their project. I uh, want to point out again, we covered this in um, in uh, Computex. We have Wi-Fi modules on the on the on the SOM. They are already certified, uh, so this will uh, enable customers to. Uh, certify their product for FCC, CE, RED, uh, TELEC. We have all the certifications. We have all the certifications on, on our products. So when they partner with you, it's all there already? It's all there. And... Uh, um, you can just ship. Yes, and uh, I urge uh, startups and uh, companies to take notice on that. Uh, the FCC uh, for North America uh, just uh, released that they're going after startups and companies uh, and that if you don't have FCC the penalty is a 150,000 US dollar per, per occurrence uh, so it is very very important for companies to have their certification in place so we stand behind our products we have this uh, uh, so all these uh, designs are some of them designed by you. The form factors? everything is designed by us. So you invented these form factors. Yeah, we are the biscuit. No, we 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 follow our our customers, and uh, we see the need from our customers and talk to them, and then we work with our customers together to create the the modules that will work for uh, for their subset of the of the market. Does it become an industry standard? Do other companies use yours? No, the Pico, the Pico generation has been uh, followed on top of uh, Intel Edison. We all know Intel Edison, so um, uh, it is uh, compatible with that. EDM, there are a number of companies uh, using EDM, uh, so uh, you can check around. Uh, you will find uh, uh, here, in the, here in the show as well. But you were the company that started the systems. Yes, we wrote uh, the complete outline for the specifications. Is it open? It's open. And free other to use? Ed, anybody can use it. Anybody can join us. And who, who Axon, Axon is a new form factor. Uh, so uh, we are just announcing that uh, actually in this show. Today? Yesterday? Uh, yes. Uh, okay. If we are looking further to our wireless uh, offering, we have uh, here we have uh, our wireless uh, offering. It's I can show you a couple products uh, if you follow me here. Uh, so this is. Um, 
let me take another one. Up. Yeah, it is an uh, M.2 uh, 12 times 60 millimeter um, um, LGA solder down um, uh, package, uh, which follows uh, Intel uh, specifications. So it is uh, the hardware pin definition is uh, defined by uh, Intel, and then we put it on a carrier board for an M.2 uh, slot, so that people can insert this uh, easily in their system. Uh, we have uh, different form factors here. I have two M.2 here in my hand. One is a key B, and one is a key E. Uh, normally, the specifications uh, identify wireless LAN should be uh, key E. But in the embedded world, we uh, see a lot of embedded systems that are using M.2 key B because that is for LTE and 4G uh, communication. However, many customers don't need to have the LTE, they want wireless LAN. And if your embedded system is super tiny, you only have one slot available. And uh, for those customers, we uh, made a key B, so they can insert that in their, uh, their system. Is it, uh, uh, when you connect through your Pixie system, is it uh, as efficient, as powerful as putting it on the PCB? Uh, yes, there is no uh, no difference. No here. loss? No loss there. No uh, it's loss a, in performance or power No, it's a PCIe interface, uh, if you have a module like this for the Wi-Fi. Um, so there is no difference there in the in the performance. But you do modems also, like um, uh, LTE kind of stuff, or no, no, we we only work on uh, Wi-Fi, Bluetooth uh, uh, technology. Nice. Um, so um, everyone is uh, everyone is now talking about uh, about the uh, Wi-Fi and connectivity, IoT, um, everything. Uh, so, as I already showed, we have our modules where we have the, uh, the Wi-Fi on the module. So you connect this uh, to the internet, a very logic uh, step to do. Um, so you need to have a reliable and um, industrial wireless network to, uh, to um, operate. And we all know the stories, everyone know. Wi-Fi in offices, Wi-Fi in uh, corporate buildings always is a lot to wish for. Uh, so, and why is that? It's because everyone that has a small or medium office or factory, they are using the same Wi-Fi technology as they are using at home. And that's just not working because of an office environment is completely different from a an, uh, an home environment. So we created uh, wireless uh, infrastructure uh, access point. It's uh, a mass Wi-Fi uh, 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 technology based on uh, Qualcomm. So, so is that one? Yes, it's this one. And what do you call it, the XADA? XADA is a, it is a total system, so uh, it comes uh, just plug and play. So you have an Ethernet port there? So we have two networking ports. Gigabit? Uh, yes, of course. And we have a, a Type-C, USB Type-C for power, and there's just a reset button uh, that is there. So... Uh, How does it compare with the Google Wi-Fi or Linksys or Synology or somebody else? Um, that is all consumer, yeah. so that is all focused on people at home. You know, a typical house have three to four people. They all have a phone, a computer, a tablet. There's a television, and there's a cleaning robot in the house. So you have around 20 devices you connect to your network. Uh, an office or a factory or a museum, conference center is completely different. There are many, many people coming. Uh, in your office, you need to connect many more users. So we can connect uh, 90 devices per access point. So if you have a configuration with, uh, like here, you have three access points. Uh, they are mass. That's 270, right? Uh, 90 plus 90 plus 90. Yeah. So it's 270. It's still 90 limited on one access point. So it is impossible to have 180 on one access point, 45, 45. However, we have a software stack uh, running on this, uh, developed in-house, where we uh, can, if a user come in and the user here, 
that if there are too many users on, on this access point, we switch the users over to the other access point to share the loading. So you're even better than the mesh standard? Uh, we just optimize Implement it to our mesh. usage, yes. Uh, what's the price on this, available? Uh, available end of April, and uh, we will do massive uh, launch uh, in early April, and at that time we will set the pricing as well. Pricing will be good? Uh, for this market, yes. Yeah. Uh, competition in this market is uh, uh, companies like uh, Cisco. Uh, they typically run in the thousands of US dollar. Uh, you will be in the hundreds. Uh, we will be in the low hundreds. Yes. Low hundreds. That's yeah. cool. All right. So, um, a little bit of recap from from previously that you visited us. Um, so, we have systems, fender systems. You've seen them before, Nicolas. Yeah. So um, we we have a new one is um, is Intel. So I don't know if uh, people are interested uh, on um, ARM devices. Uh, ARM devices, <laughs> right? Yeah. Uh, cool. So but I'll this add is an Intel tag to the so this is uh, Intel Apollo Lake, uh, for example, a very a very slim. Uh, you have many customers on this Intel kind of products already? Uh, yes, we have. Yeah. Yes. Uh, so we have a lot of customers on ARM. Uh, you know, uh, Nicolas, uh, we are working on ARM technology over a decade. Uh, so uh, and all the biggest company in the in the world are working with you. Like we have a lot of well-known customers. You have NXP is huge. You have uh, you have Google, Qualcomm. Yes, we, we have a lot of customers uh, and suppliers. Um, so we are always integrated in a system, so we are a component for a total solution. But uh, many people use our technology on, an, on a daily basis, even without knowing that we are behind the scenes in the, in the product. Nice. So the systems, the touch panel systems you have seen uh, yeah. in Computex before. People can go to the Computex movie on your homepage. Yeah. So, um, How popular is this? It is uh, quite popular, yes. Um, we had a very smart idea here with different power options. So uh, um, it's very flexible and easy to integrate. The last thing for today um, as a takeaway is um, we have a number of uh, sensors uh, um, available. And I need to grab them for a second. Okay. So. So there I am. Sorry about that. Okay. My co-workers stole them. So we have um, a bunch of uh, of sensors. Um, so that you can see here. So this is an environmental sensor. So you can detect uh, gases. So don't fart. Um, <laughs> okay. Uh, so but uh, can. Um, can detect an, uh, a number of gases as for use in factories and uh, offices. Um, we all uh, care about uh, our health, uh, yeah. so uh, sensing uh, uh, sensing uh, different gases, smoke uh, can uh, improve uh, our health and safety. Uh, so we have these in an, a macho with with a clickable form uh, factor, and it works very easy. So here I have a radio module. It has the this connector. Here I have my, my sensor. It has the mating connector. I click them together. Of course, I will mount this. And then underneath, I just need to, to add an, a little uh, thing like this. I will. And then I have power. I have wireless communication and I have my, my sensor for data. So I can put them next to each other, for example, if, uh, if that works better for me. Um, so this way you have your, you can in an office or a factory, you can uh, sense your, your gas, your smoke, your environment, uh, temperature, uh, uh, gas pressure. So you can detect all that uh, parameters you have a wireless interface that connects to our uh, mesh networking. 
and then you can collect all your data and you can set alarms so that you, uh, you are notified of an emergency. I think that uh, will uh, improve the, the safety of people uh, in a house or in a uh, facility. So um, we know everywhere, in every building, every factory, there are sensors. You, you stay in a hotel, you see an, a blinking light of a smoke detector. Um, however, we don't pay notice to that and we, um, we tend to forget that they are there. And in the case of emergency, it is very important that they are working so that they can wake you up. And uh, we think that by connecting these sensors onto uh, Wi-Fi and to have alarm systems that uh, maintenance staff get notifications on their cell phone uh, if something is wrong, uh, will uh, will make the products more reliable. So you don't want to be in a hotel and then the sensors are not working and you don't wake up. But the hotel um, also want to know that the sensor is broken so they can send the surface guy to the room to replace it uh, for the user. The same in an office and a factory. A smoke detector or a gas detector installing in a place doesn't guarantee that it is working if you don't monitor it. So uh, we think connecting those devices and continuously monitor them and have uh, warnings uh, going out if something goes wrong will, uh, will help uh, our, our safety. Actually in my Airbnb there's no carbon monoxide detector. So it'd be nice to have a portable well, one because it's, it's so small. Can it's I bring good. my own and plug it in? Well, it is good you came today then because maybe we would not see you tomorrow. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> um, yeah, actually you can make that in, an, in a mobile unit. Uh, that should be not too difficult to do. Because bring it, it is in every hotel, so I bring it all everywhere you are and be responsible for your own safety. Uh, you could do that, yes. And you can do a lot of environmental sensing there as well for, for health, for pollution that you know um, if it is safe out there. Nice. So it's a very inexpensive um, uh, sensors and because they are clickable with, uh, with the connector, you can actually easily change uh, to tailor your needs. And we have a bunch of different sensors available. What are the other sensors? Uh, humidity, uh, weather uh, station, temperature, smoke, uh, different gases, uh, a lot of sensors. And how many of your boards support this? Uh, almost all of them. Almost all of yeah. them. Yeah. Uh, so what's the latest with your company? I did a video in your office uh, a year and two, a half ago. Yeah, two, two years, years ago. ago. And so how's it going now? Uh, very good. Um, everyone you saw in the movie is still there. Um, in R&D, we added a lot of R&D resources. Um, we have a lot of new employees in R&D helping us to develop new technology. Uh, as you saw in the movie earlier, we have wireless access point technology. Uh, we have a big team of people working on that. Um, around, I think, 30, 35 people are working on that. Um, we have the sensors, we have the NXP uh, new technology with the 8M Mini. And there's a lot of ad additional things that are coming um, in the rest of the year. And uh, um, we, we actually want you to come to visit us in June when you are in Taipei. And we can do a company tour to show you uh, new technology there and the things we are working on. Nice. And you were showing all these different chipsets, all this. But it's not that easy to support all this, right? What? That's like each of them is a whole story of doing support, yes. onboarding, what's it called, all this stuff, making yes. sure it works. So from the beginning to the end to design a product um, takes about a year. Uh, so uh, we are working with a lot of silicon that is not on the market yet. Um, the 8M Mini announced available today by NXP, well yesterday. We have it also available for our customers. You can go to our homepage and you can order a sample and it will ship within two weeks. So this means we have early access on the silicon uh, from NXP. We have been working with them for a year to create and support this product uh, to allow uh, customers uh, all over the world to at launch date get the dev kits and start developing their end application.
And just to get an idea, all your customers are all kinds of... Uh, yeah, uh, from startups to to big multinationals in different industries, hospitality, agriculture, um, transportation, um, heavy industry, a lot of different markets. Uh, they're using the same products, uh, but in a completely different uh, industry. Yeah.